night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, UTC-5. The Linux Distro Community and Spatry's Cup of Linux presents The Linux Bandits. The topic of discussion is going to be the rise of SteamOS. And I can't think of a better way to celebrate than to show you what SteamOS looks like. And we're going to see it right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, before I show you the SteamOS operating system, I'm going to cover a few things with you. First, I'm going to look at this from a desktop user's standpoint. And the reason being is because this is touted as being a Linux distribution that you could theoretically run on your desktop. But also, I'm running this in a virtual machine, and this software is not designed for that. The system requirements are a 64-bit processor, either a MD or Intel. You're going to need 4 gigs of RAM, a 500 gig hard drive. I think the recommended is a terabyte. You will need an NVIDIA graphics card. You will, you will need UEFI boot support and of course a USB drive with which to you know install this because you're going to extract all the contents of the uh, drive into your flash drive and then boot from that. Okay, so first let's go ahead and go into our screen here and if you are running this in a virtual machine you're going to be presented with the default X session. Now you do have the choice of GNOME, GNOME Classic, or SteamOS. When I tried to run it in SteamOS it did not want to work for me, but that could have just simply been because I did not have my Steam account set up yet. I'm just going to go and show you the default session. To log in, the username is Steam, and so is the password. Steam OS is based on Debian 7 Wheezy, which is very, very well known for its stability. I haven't been able to break this OS in the amount of time that I've had to play with this. But as you can see here, this does look like a pretty interesting desktop. So before I go into the Steam client itself, let's have a look and see what you get with this. If you click on your activities here and go into applications, you can see there are a number of accessories available to you, a calculator, a character map, you have your disk utilities, you have a terminal available. So if you're going to install packages on this, you will need to assign a root password from the grub menu going into the restore and assigning a password there. And then you can start installing applications on this from the Debian repositories. The only thing in terms of games is just a Steam client and a uh, bug report tool. But I did install one of my games from my library just so that I could give this a try. You get the events document viewer and an image viewer. In the internet, you get IceWeasel for your internet browser. And then of course, desktop sharing is also available to you. You get a dictionary. And of course, the document viewer again in Office. But that's not to say, you know, you would be able to install an Office suite. So just think about this. If you were to have the Steam box in your living room, you could bring your work home and do your work on the big screen. All you have to do is just install a LibreOffice suite or something like that. How cool is that? So yeah, this is neat stuff. Okay, just a standard disk burner with this, Brazero. A number of system tools come pre-installed with this. You can uh, add or uh, remove software, decomp editor, disk usage analyzer, a number of other tools. No universal access and nothing really in other. So really not a whole lot of applications in this, but the nice thing about this is you can build on top of this and add a lot more things. But we're not really here to look at the uh, Steam OS as a desktop, really, you know. So let's have a look at Steam itself. Now, when I first launched this, this downloaded about 210 megs worth of data to update the uh, Steam 
uh, client, but it seems to behave very well, despite the fact that I'm running this in a virtual machine. And here it is. It's giving me some deals for games already. And of course, it's opening up directly into my game library. And I already installed Gratuitous Space Battles. I figured I'd install something light because this is working in a virtual machine. So let's just go ahead and play this. And as I mentioned, the, the graphics are a little, you know, the, you know, the graphics and everything are a little bit choppy, but that is to be expected because I am not running the minimum hardware requirements. But that's okay. At least I get a taste of what we can come to expect once they do have support for uh, the ATI graphics card that I use. And now I know a number of you want to see this. Let's hope things don't blow up. We'll run this in big picture mode now. Interestingly enough, there was an, a plugin when I was running Linux Lite that you could uh, install and then just boot your computer into big screen mode, uh, just like this, and then run that directly on your computer. And as I indicated, yes, it is a little bit choppy and that sort of thing, but I'm not running with the right system requirements. But you can see it's here, ready to go. It's an interesting way to navigate your desktop. It also has a built-in web browser as well, which personally I didn't really care for when I uh, tried the uh, big screen in the past. I didn't like the look and feel of it, but hey, this is perfect for the living room. All right, so pretty cool. And of course, you can interact with all of your friends by clicking a link on the lower right of the screen that I'm blocking, but that's okay. Okay, back to normal here. All right, so at least you get a taste of uh, what it is you're getting, and I'm surprised that it's performing as well as it is in a virtual machine. All I've got to say to this, to uh, Gabe Newell and Steam, good job. Wouldn't surprise me in the least if uh, we start seeing spins of Arch Linux. Uh, that are tailored for Steam based on all of the contributions that they're making to the community. You know, maybe Fedora doing spins and that sort of thing. I think uh, when Steam released the client for Ubuntu, I think it was like a week later, all of the distributions had it. So they're making a tremendous contribution to the community, and I can't wait to see what they keep dishing out. Personally, uh, I'd like to see this mature a little bit more before I put this on an actual piece of hardware. But um, all in all, looking awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Gabe Newell. Thank you. Mm -hmm.